his name is Sully Hedyar. He is the political officer of the East Turkestan National Awakening Movement, a movement that has been pulled together to try to call attention to and remedy what is now being done by the Chinese as part of their war on faith uh, to the Uyghur population of uh, East Turkestan. We're very pleased to have you with us. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, come on up. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank uh, Frank Gaffney and the uh, rest of the committee for having me. Uh, my name is Sali Hudayar. I am an Uyghur and I am an American. Uh, I was born in China-occupied East Turkestan, a land that some of you might know as Xinjiang. Uh, in 1949, our independent Republic of East Turkestan was invaded by Chinese Communist forces. Our sovereign government was overthrown and the Chinese Communist Party began a brutal campaign to assert their control over our homeland. They renamed our homeland to Xinjiang. It literally means the new territory. But to this day, the Uyghurs and other native peoples of East Turkestan don't call it that. We call it East Turkestan. And we would ask that you call it East Turkestan too. My story begins when I was just a child. When I was four years old, my uncle was arrested. His crime, he had been reading a religious book. Eager to find out where my uncle got the banned book, the police raided our home in the middle of the night. The Chinese communist authorities grabbed me and told my family that they would kill me unless they told them what they wanted to hear. Desperate to save my four-year-old life, my family told the communist authorities everything that they wanted to hear. As a result, most of the males, adult males in my family were arrested. Today, I have over 100 relatives, including my immediate and extended family, who are imprisoned in China's vast systems of prisons, concentration camps, and Bingtuan labor camps. Every time I speak out, the Chinese Communist Party's occupation forces target my family. And I'm sure that they'll be watching today's event uh, live streamed and will only continue to target my family more. But that will not silence me. With every family member they arrest, torture, or kill, my resolve to advocate for East Turkestan's independence only solidifies. I will not kowtow and I will not bow. When I was seven years old, my family was finally able to afford to flee our homeland and we came to America. We settled in Oklahoma and here in the land of the free and the home of the brave, we felt welcomed. I joined the United States Army with the hopes of becoming a military officer in order to show my gratitude to the nation that gave my family hope. Unfortunately, my military career was cut short and I was honorably discharged due to a kidney condition. I love America and America is my home. Since I left East Turkestan, China's campaign of terror against the people of East Turkestan has only intensified. This is a war on ethnically Turkic people. This is a war on religion. And most of all, this is a war on the idea, on an idea, the idea of a free and independent East Turkestan. The oppression of religion is what I want to talk about today. And first off, to be clear of the mis uh, misconceptions, China's war on religion is not, is not only uh, exclusive to the Uyghurs or other Muslims. In fact, you know, uh, Christians are being profoundly affected too. And so too are Buddhists and practitioners of Falun Gong and even religious adherents of uh, like Judaism, Hinduism, and Taoism. And they too are suffering under this brutal campaign. Today, the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination estimates that upwards of 3 million innocent souls are being held in so-called re-education camps or vacational training centers. 
And these are sick euphemisms for what is in reality concentration camps. Mosques, churches, and temples are being destroyed. Facial recognition cameras are being deployed around the religious buildings. Muslim imams, Christian pastors, and Buddhist monks are being surveilled and arrested. Faithful Muslims are being forced to eat pork and drink alcohol. And China isn't just targeting the faithful, it's targeting their leaders too. Through coercion, intimidation, bribery, disinformation, or some combination of the four, China has managed to win the silence of Pope Francis and Saudi King bin Salman. The faithful in China and the region it occupies, like East Turkestan and Tibet, are left without defenders. China's war on religion, war on Turkic peoples, war on the idea of an independent East Turkestan isn't limited on male adults. Vulnerable women and children are being targeted too, even the unborn. East Turkestani women are being forced to marry ethnically Han, atheist, communist Chinese men. Expectant Uyghur mothers are, be Uyghur mothers are being forced to undergo abortions in order to comply with China's arbitrary population control policies. In the camps, women and men are being sterilized. Children are being separated from their families and being placed in state-run orphanages. Even in my own family, I have many of my youngest relatives that are missing and possibly in these orphanages or boarding schools, as they call it. For the Chinese Communist Party, communism is a religion in and of itself. They seek to place the state higher than all and any power. History shows that totalitarian, genocidal regimes often do this. Look at Nazi Germany, look at the Soviet Union. The Uyghurs and the people of East Turkestan are only the latest victims of communism. At any moment, China may decide to shift from slowly starving us in the concentration camps to actively exterminating us. Without meaningful international action, the people of East Turkestan may be facing a holocaust. What we need today is for America to resurrect the lessons of the Cold War and to know that America is in an existential battle with a rising totalitarian hegemon. We need to stop trade negotiations with the religion-hating, human rights-abusing regime in Beijing and instead we need to impose punishing trade tariffs and human rights sanctions. Americans' consumers should be rallied to boycott made-in-China goods, especially those that are made with forced labor. American banks and institutional investors should lead an effort to divest from Chinese stocks, especially the stocks of companies who are knowingly enabling China's human rights atrocities. For our part, our organization, the East Turkestan National Awakening Movement, is leading the nonviolent effort to advocate for restoring East Turkestani independence, and we won't stop. It is vital that America recognize the clear and present danger that China poses to all free people, marshalling all available resources to wage a whole front of government effort to undermine the Chinese Communist Party and to support the aspirations of peaceful pro-independence and pro-democracy activists in occupied East Turkestan, Tibet, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Southern Mongolia, Manchuria, and elsewhere. I'm here to tell you that the people of East Turkestan support independence. The people of East Turkestan support America, and the people of East Turkestan hope that America will support us too. Thank you, and God bless you.